the college football experience, FCS college football season preview episode on the sports gambling podcast networks presented by win bet, bet a hundred dollars at win bet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by us. Yes. The college football experience. Get ready for the college football season by checking out all 131, 131 college football team previews and podcast. Just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash CFB. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash CFB. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Yes, yes, woo! Welcome, welcome to the college football experience, FCS college football season preview edition. My name is Kobe Swinging Database Dead, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists. And lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, what? You didn't think I was going to give you an FCS preview? Let's go. Subscribe over on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. And remember, wherever you listen to podcasts, add subscribe to the college football experience and the college basketball experience because this year, Providing we get the lines okay, you will have FCS Fridays on the college football experience coming at you. So buckle up all year long. We're going to have you covered. And it starts here the road to Frisco, baby. Uh, look, I mean, you probably did, you probably had no idea that we were going to do this one. Well, I don't know. I, I sometimes I have a few cocktails to start talking about it, but it's easy to see a tide turn. And let's talk a little bit about hop in the chat too. Feel free to hop in the chat. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit, a little bit of FCS here because North Dakota state has been the reigning chance. It's interesting. North Dakota state's just been dominating the FCS. Uh, what I think eight of the last 10 FCS championships. They, they, they spend their, their, they spend more than every other FCS program. They're kind of uh, baffling to me because you would think they would jump to the FBS at, at this point, but uh, they don't. We so this year we see James Madison exit, which is substantial because the CAA is going to be wide open. You think maybe Villanova, Delaware? They've been blue bloods within the uh, the CAA for the most part. Perhaps one of those two will capitalize. I know Richmond's had some good teams over the past 20, 30 years as well. Maybe New Hampshire will will battle back into the mix. I think the Rhode Island Rams could be one. We're going to talk more about that in a second, but. Uh, James Madison gone, and then you have uh, what Jacksonville State and Stephen, or not Stephen F. Austin, but Jacksonville State and Sam Houston State on the way out the door. They will be in the FBS next year, not this year. This is their last season in the FCS, so they're not even eligible to play for their conference championship. So there's that, um, and I think those are huge points there because all of a sudden the field opens up, but it's weird because North Dakota state who's dominating the most hasn't been jumping to the FBS. No, they haven't had an invite. I know the Sunbelt invited James Madison, all this stuff, but it is interesting that them in South Dakota state and, and Montana, Montana state have kind of been like such a good FCS program for so long. They've stayed put where now we've seen JMU. We saw before Appalachian state, coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern. Um, I can go on and on and on about the teams that were once FCS that have jumped up and made that transition. And uh, we're going to go over odds to win the, the FCS national championship. We're going to go over odds um, for, for some win totals out there that we have. So sit back, relax. We're going to hop into this. I'm going to go conference by conference though, and talk about, you know, some of the, uh, the big time, the big time things. And I'm going to start off with, we have the, we're going to go alphabetically here. We have the a sun and the whack. Right, the A Sun and the WAC together this year. Well, for two years it seems like now. Um, 
like I said, remember, uh, Jacksonville state, rich Rodriguez year one. I can't wait to watch that game this Saturday against Stephen F Austin. Um, but they're not el- eligible to, uh, to win because they're jumping to the FBS next year. Sam Houston state who won the, the FCS national championship just what two years ago, not eligible. So the door is open and a lot of people are talking and I am one of these people talking because we got the Kennesaw state owls. Yes. They departed the big South with three conference championships four playoff bids since 2017. And you know what I love about Kennesaw state. First off their hunger for football. It's a program that was started not that long ago and they were smart about it. They said, Hey, if we're going to ha- what is the best way for us to have instant success on the football field? Oh, there's this offense out there called the triple option offense. That is pretty fucking amazing. If you run it, uh, I don't understand why. I mean, I'm, we mostly cover the FBS here, but we are covering the FCS. I don't understand why all the teams struggling don't run this offense. And they do, they run the triple option. They got quarterback Xavier Shepard who ran for uh, a 20, well, I think 23 touchdowns on the ground a season ago. He is back. Uh, third in the nation in, in, in rush offense a season ago, sixth in a time of possession also. So I know they get the Cincinnati game this year out of at a, their FBS matchup, which I think Cincinnati was smart to do that because they play Navy later in the year. So it's great to get some reps on the triple option. Uh, but I'm very excited to see Kennesaw state. Um, what they, I don't, don't think they're this weekend, their week one matchup there on a Thursday night. that I'm very excited to watch. Uh, then you have, you know, so they're, they're the preseason favorite, but not far back. And you'll be able to watch this team this Saturday. I know that rich Rodriguez was claiming that they were uh, spying on their practices, but I'm talking about the Stephen F Austin lumberjacks uh, preseason top 10 team, just like Kennesaw and quarterback trace self. This guy lights it up 3,200 yards, 22 touchdowns a season ago. And they also have perhaps the top rated uh, wide receiver in the FCS in Xavier Gibson who averaged, uh, I mean, just, I mean, what I think he, he had like 1400 yards of memory serve me. Correct. Um, they're loaded. They're absolutely loaded. And they got, they got a good, I mean, this is a team that pushed, they went to uh, the FCS playoffs this season ago, lost in overtime to, I believe it was incarnate word and Cameron ward who he's now the starting quarterback of Washington state. Um, so Stephen of Austin, Kennesaw state, that's going to be a fun watch to see who can, who can get that, that, that bid in, in this division. And also you also have Eastern Kentucky who has Parker McKinney at quarterback uh, 53 total touchdowns in his career. Very exciting to see, you know, Eastern Kentucky has been trying to get to the FBS for a while and they might end up there eventually. Um, this team has had, they were kind of like a blue blood for a little bit there. And uh, they, they regressed a little bit. They're trying to get back on track. Um, and we're going to see, I think this matchup, this race, this conference race between uh, all these teams also got a, I got a note that the uh, central Arkansas bears solid team, central Arkansas a few years ago. I really liked how physical this team was. They are in that in in this conference, and I feel like they're in the mix with Eastern Kentucky. Um, they they uh, they lost uh, Braylon Smith, but they bring in Northern Iowa quarterback transfer Will McIlvain. It's going to be interesting to see how they play. It's going to be very interesting to see. But I think that's the race. After that, I do think it's a bit of a drop off. Yes, you have the the governors of Austin P, which we'll see this Saturday um, take on the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. They had a winning season a year ago. But they did lose some key pieces. I know they got Dre McCray, the wide receiver, and uh, Shamari Simmons, the uh, the corner. And they, they, I think they, they had uh, a ton of takeaways last year. One of the better defenses in all the FCS. We'll see how they go up against that high-powered Western Kentucky offense Saturday morning. That line, I think, is at twenty-one and a half, I believe. Uh, and then you have the rest, Abilene Christian. I feel like you know. They're an interesting team to watch. Keith Patterson comes in, takes over as a head coach. Um, It'll be interesting to see. They were, they kind of underachieved. I feel like recently, but they could be a team that jumps up and maybe could find themselves in the mix. North Alabama. They, this was a D two school. Not that long ago. Um, They're going to be interesting to watch. They're, they're, uh, they're eligible for the FCS playoffs for the first time. Maybe magic can happen. I remember what uh, Terry Bowden used to coach here. 
maybe, maybe something can happen. They got, they got uh, Parker Driggers at the running back spot, a couple of uh, wide receivers that are pretty good and a uh, good tight end. So, Hey, I don't know. Let's check it out. Uh, after that, you got the Southern Utah Thunderbirds and uh, yeah. And then you have ineligible, but, but going to be really good. I keep an eye on Tarleton, Tarleton state. They're investing a lot in their football program. And I think they really could be uh, a team to watch like a blue blood in the FCS in the future years. Uh, they're not eligible yet because they're in the transition to D one, but they just got Kentucky quarterback, Bo Allen. And he, he was just named a uh, starter. I think yesterday or today. Um, so keep an eye out for them. I think they're going to be a dangerous out. Then you have Dixie state. Well, now they're called Utah tech. They're still not eligible. They did the same jump as well. Uh, they were just one in ten a season ago. So they have their work cut out for them. And then you have, like I said, Jacksonville state and Sam Houston state. So you're going to get a bunch of really cool matchups in this conference. It's just funny. Cause you have four teams that are not eligible. Uh, so that will be a blast. I think to watch um, the a sun as, as the season, you know, really heats up. Um, let's hop over and talk a little big South action. Um, the big, big South Campbell's on the way out the door. They're about to go to the CAA, but Mike mentor landed. He, he landed a recruiting class. You remember Mike mentor, former Nebraska cornerback played for the Carolina Panthers and green Bay Packers. He has been doing a, a great job at Campbell. Um, I know last year was a tough year, but a couple of years ago, I really liked what they did. They should have knocked off Georgia Southern in the opener. Uh, got really got their heart broken in that game, but they still have Haj Malik Williams at the quarterback spot. He got injured last year. And I think with him healthy and the recruiting class, they just put in, which I, I want to say it charted in the sixties or early seventies, including FBS. So I'm saying like that was that, that good. I mean, Jackson state and Campbell really stole a lot of the headlines. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to watch that team that they're, they're, they're going to be joining the, uh, the CAA, you know, I think next season, I think is when they make that jump. So it will be very interesting to see how they do this year. I kind of think they should be the favorites in this conference, but I know my guy, Terrell Furman jr. His North Carolina a and T Aggies are gonna, are gonna are due for a good season. I know they have that season opener uh, against North Carolina central in Charlotte. That is awesome. Glad to see their, you know, that, that rivalry got broken up by North North Carolina A and T's jump into the big South, but glad to see that they're making it work. Um, then after that, you kind of, this conference, you know, is only a six team conference. You got Charleston Southern um, who's had some good years before uh, they jumped up recently too. Uh, you got the, you got Bryant um, coming over from what the NEC um, Gardner Webb. And and Robert Morris, I don't know. I think a lot of these teams, it's just, uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like this is kind of a a a two team race. Maybe you can make a case, Charles, Charleston Southern. Actually, you know what? Maybe Bryant. Maybe Bryant could be a, a surprise team there in that conference. Should be fun to watch though. I, I'm really, I honestly, am really excited to watch Campbell. Campbell opens up, I think, in what next Thursday. They get the Citadel, and I think it's a three o'clock kick out here on the West. Um, six o'clock on the East. I think it's the first game, one of the first games. And I'm very excited to watch uh, that one uh, next, next week as we will be, we're, we're going to have to somehow get it. Uh, there's so many games on Thursday. It's the only week that they, they really load up the slate on Thursday. FCS uh, the next Thursday, what you got some really nice matchups within the CAA. You got Monmouth, New Hampshire, you got Kennesaw State, Samford, a little SoCon action there, or uh, you know, a Sun SoCon matchup. Uh, Rhode Island at Stony Brook, a CAA conference game. Uh, this is all on Thursday night, and like I said, the Citadel at Campbell. You get the triple option against Hajmalik Williams and and and, and Mike Minter. Um, I'm excited for the North Alabama Indiana State matchup too. You get uh, Mississippi Valley State and Tarleton next Thursday. M- Missouri State Central Arkansas. Absolutely fantastic. Besides the big matchups you get in the uh, you know the the FBS against the FCS, there are some loaded games week one for uh, f- for some FCS action. So make sure you get yourself some ESPN Plus and uh, what even even that ter- you know NEC NEC front row Flow Sports load up, folks. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to see Campbell this year. 
I think they're one of like, if I had to make a list of teams to, to like 10 teams to watch Campbell would be on my list for this year. But uh, all right, folks, I got to get us paid. I want to tell you that the college football experience FCS season preview episodes brought to you by win bet. Yes. Bet a hundred dollars at win bet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by Good old odds trader. Yes, odds trader is a place to compare odds from all the major sports books. You can also compare different sign up codes and promo codes from sports book to sports book to assure that you get the best deal possible. The app also provides player stats, key game stats, injury reports, projected game day weather for betters who make the most informed bets possible. It also has a bet tracker so betters can, can keep records of all your games and betting activity, which I, I absolutely love. Whether I'm betting FCS, FBS, NFL, uh, you get me in November. And I'm like betting FBS, FCS playoffs, NFL, college basketball, might even throw some action down on the NHL, maybe the NBA. You got the World Cup going this year. Uh, those, the, you know, November and December, just batshit crazy. You end up getting even the Grey Cup is in November I'm mean, in the CFL. So boxing, MMA, mixing all that shit all together. Um, it's just, uh, I always get unorganized. So what's great is odds trader organizes that go to oddstradercom slash blue wire odds trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. We're also brought to you by run your pool, uh, run your pool is the home of competition, bringing sports fans and their social circles together to compete, connect and make every game matter more. And let me tell you, run your pool offers every game you could think of under the sun, pick up survivor fantasy pools, and get this. We here at SGPN have teamed up with run your pool to do our own NFL survivor contest. Hop in now to reserve your spot free to enter. The winner gets $500 and a $250 gift certificate to the SGPN store. What are you doing folks? Hop in now, sign up today at play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. That's play.runyourpool.com slash S G P N. All right. We are back talking a lot of the fun. I love, I love me some FCS college football. Um, let's talk a little big sky, big sky. Always one of my favorites, probably my favorite over the years. I know the Missouri Valley's emerged. Uh, the CAA was always fun too, but man, the big sky. I've been to a Montana game, Eastern Washington at Montana and Missoula. That was one of the best college games I've been to as far as atmosphere, as far as a great football game, a great product on the field. Uh, and, and just unbelievable. And they're, they're the preseason favorites, despite Montana state playing for the FBS uh, uh, or I'm sorry, the FCS national championship just, just uh, a year ago, which is pretty shocking. I know, I know Bobby Hawk won the brawl of the wild in Missoula and uh, it'll be interesting to see Brent Vigen, uh in year two with the Bobcats. Um, that will be awesome to watch. But uh, Bobby Hawk, and, and Montana, the preseason favorites, it seems like well, for most publications that I've seen um, that, that right there, those two teams, the epitome of why FCS college football is awesome. Montana state, Montana, brawl of the wild sign me up every year. And look, Tommy Malott is back at Montana state. It's going to be interesting to watch. It's going to be very interesting to watch the, the you know, because Montana brings in a couple transfers and Montana state too. I mean, I think they get what well, Sean Montana state brings in Sean chambers from Wyoming. I still expect them a lot to start and they obviously have a, you know, a great ground game, but also Montana brings in Lucas Johnson from San Diego state with the Aztecs. He only won what 10 or 11 games a season ago. Um, it's going to be very interesting to, uh, to see them. Obviously Marcus Knight is back with, with Montana um, uh, for the ground game there, but also this conference is always fun. Another school that I feel like has always been a thorn in the side of the FBS is Eastern Washington. I know they lose Eric Barriere. He was in the USFL for the Michigan Panthers, but this program on that, on that red turf has always been very fun. Uh, so I get it. They lose one of the best passers in, in big sky history, let alone Eastern Washington history and Eric Barriere, but Gunnar Talkington six year senior. He waited. He wait. Look, this is fantastic. He is projected to be the starter with, with the Eagles. They're still a preseason top 25 team. Um, and this whole conference is great. I mean, you got Sacramento state who just can't find postseason success. I don't get it. They've been good. They've been really good. Can uh, Troy Taylor get it going there? Uh, 
must watch all of this. All the Weber state who I always love watching too. Um, they get what uh, Bronson Barron, if he could stay healthy and, uh, and, and they got the, the, the running back, Josh Davis. Wow. I mean, can Weber state emerge as a team? I think they're, they're on upset watch when they play Utah state. What is that? Week three, I believe week three. Um, they're in the mix. They got my guy. They got my guy, Dan Hawkins at uh, UC Davis. It's the It's the big sky. Uh, yeah. I mean, this conference is always a blast to watch. Uh, so I do, I do expect it to go chalk. I think it's going to be the top two Montana teams at the top, but I don't know who's going to win that. I, you know, obviously I feel like Montana state stole it last year from them. Well, at least in, in the postseason. but I know Montana won in the regular season. Um, but I'm very excited to see the whole, the whole race. I want to see how Eastern Washington responds without barrier. I think Weber state, you know, they had a, a uncharacteristically kind of a drop off season last year, just six and five. I think they're going to bounce back into the mix. Sacramento state should be in that mix. Maybe they can find a way to get some postseason success. And then UC Davis, Dan Hawkins, they won at Tulsa last year. And by the way, let's talk about big sky in, in against the FBS last year, Eastern Washington won at UNLV. UC Davis won at Tulsa. Tulsa almost beat Cincinnati folks. Uh, Northern Arizona took care of Arizona in the PAC 12 uh, Montana took care of Washington in the PAC 12 Montana state only lost by three at Wyoming. They almost pulled off five wins there. Shout out to this conference. It, it is, it is a deep conference. It is very fun to watch. Um, but I'm very curious about that next tier. Like we know this top six, really, I feel like you kind of, everyone's kind of got that figured out. Maybe not the order of the top six, but then you have the second tier. Can, can somebody get off the floor here? Can Northern Arizona be a dark horse this, this year? RJ Martinez was a very good quarterback. Um, they got Kevin Daniels at the running back spot. I am very excited to see if they can pull off some ups. They play Arizona state next Thursday. If Arizona State, who lost a ton in Herm Edwards' critical year, like I said, Northern Arizona beat Arizona last year. Can you imagine if they pulled off that upset in Tempe and then they could be like, hey, we're the best team in Arizona over the past, what, 12 months? Pretty amazing. Um, but I would love to see that program go to the next tier and get back to, I mean, oh, I feel like 15, 20 years ago, they were really good. Uh, then you have Portland State. They returned 17 starters and they got Davis Alexander. Uh, is what I think he might be gone now. The quarter quarterback, um, but 17 starters back. You got to love that. And uh, yeah, the Vikings, they get next Thursday. They are getting San Jose state in San Jose. I know they bring in the the running back from Boise as a transfer. It'll be interesting to watch the Vikings. I love that coach. He was like offering, he was buying everyone beers last year to come to the the Portland state game. Love that big Viking fan here. Uh, going to be interesting to see if they can come up and then you have the Idaho vandals, brand new coach coming in. Um, he was with South Dakota state last year as, as a uh, uh, OC there. Right? So can he, uh, can he get, he brought in Jabori Gibbs, former Jack rabbits quarterback. So that's going to be interesting to watch um, the vandals. I've been there to Moscow, but let, this is a fun team. It's a fun team. Then you got Northern Colorado. Ed McCaffrey is the head coach there. It'll be interesting to see if he could turn that corner. I think year two for him. Uh, then after that, Cal Poly. I still think Cal Poly should be running the triple option. The Mustangs, please come on, bring it back. Come on, John Madden went there. All right, they you, Smash Mouth football is supposed to happen there, uh, but they're just two and nine last year. Bo Baldwin's got his work cut out for him. Uh, and then you have Idaho State, who was just in an absolute disaster. Um, Lately, they bring in a new head coach. They were awful last year, one in ten. They even had a scandal this offseason. I believe one of their assistants got a murder charge. So they actually play this weekend. So we get to we get to scout the Bengals this weekend in Vegas at the Death Star, taking on uh, Marcus Arroyo. I know they have like fifty-one players coming in that weren't on the roster last year. The turnover is unbelievable, but it'll be fun to watch the Bengals' growth. Brand new system. Brand new co- uh, coach, brand, probably a brand new quarterback. I would assume. I know they haven't announced a starter yet, but that should be fun. 
that conference race is going to be a blast every week. It's must watch TV here at God's eye SGP at studios. We throw it on. We always have a pretty much a big sky TV going on. Uh, but that conference always a bundle of fun. Then, you know, we have the CAA, which you want to talk about one. This is what's great about this season. I know most people tuning in will say, well, it's either going to be North Dakota state or South Dakota state that wins the championship. Probably true. The divide is pretty big there. But if you're looking for storylines on why to watch James Madison's gone, they've been a blue blood in the CAA. Yes. You can make the case that Villanova and Delaware have been blue bloods over the past 30 years as well, but you got kind of got an opening because JMU has been that number one tier team recently. I know Delaware, the, the spring season had that, that run with, with Nolan Henderson and Nolan Henderson entered the portal and then came back. So uh, that was a very big get for, for Delaware. Um, it is going to be really interesting to watch, to see how uh, Ryan Cardi, brand new head coach, uh, Danny Rocco done in, in, you know, there in Delaware. And then you have Villanova, which I think so. And I even think you could have some other teams here. That's what's so compelling uh, with, with this conference, I think is okay. Villanova, Delaware, watch out for Rhode Island, the Rams of Rhode Island. I know they got what they got house by Pitt. I think it was last year. But Kasim Hill, the Maryland transfer at quarterback, they brought in some other decent transfers that I think could really uh, perhaps boost this team. They're in the mix. So shout out to the Rhode Island Rams. Um, so Villanova, Delaware, Rhode Island, that, that race is going to be a ton of fun. And I even think you might see a couple other teams in the mix. Uh, well, Mike London's still at William and Mary. Remember, this is a guy that was once the, the head coach of UVA. It'll be interesting to see if William and Mary can get off that floor six and five season a year ago. So starting to head in the right direction for a long time. When I was growing up in that area in the nineties, William and Mary was really, really good. Uh, Then you have the Stony Brook Seahawks, just a five and six season, a season ago. Can they come up? And I'll tell you this one, the Richmond spiders, they're one of these interesting teams to me because they brought in some big time transfers. Reese Yadinsky, who was a Maryland quarterback, but via VMI, he lit it up at VMI and he also brought in wide receiver or they brought, they also brought in uh, Jacob Harris from VMI. This dude has 226 receptions in his career. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, spiders, the spiders open the season with, uh, with Virginia. Now I know Richmond lost one of their best defensive linemen to, uh, to wake forest, but that's that game's going to be fun. I think Richmond could surprise in this conference, watch out. And then you have like a couple other real mystery teams to me. Elon, Elon gets Matt McKay, who famously at Montana state quit like right before going to the playoffs or whatever. Uh, But he was originally an NC state Wolfpack transfer. Um, Elon gets, I believe they get Vandy week two or no week one next week. I think they get Vandy. If I forget if it's week one or week two, but that should be an interesting matchup because Vandy, you know, they lost to East Tennessee state a year ago. Can Elon come up? I'm always interested in, uh, you know, what Monmouth, Tony Musket has been a baller. They almost, they really going back to that spring season. I thought they should have knocked off Sam Houston state. They were in a spot to do so. I think they could be a real player in the CAA this year. That's what, that's why this conference is going to be a blast to watch. I really believe this conference more than more than probably any of the other. I mean, look, Missouri Valley and big sky every year, but now that the doors open, could it be Delaware? Could it be Rhode Island Villanova? I also think some of these other teams have a chance to get in the mix. So each week is going to be awesome. The main ba- uh, black bears, um, they, they're a, kind of an interesting team. I know they had their struggles recently, but uh, they finished the season last year, five and one uh, Joe Fagnano back at QB. So they should be fun. I even like what Towson did in the portal. I know they, they lost their coach, but uh, going out and getting a couple quarterbacks that are, that are capable uh, Tyler Johnson coming in from UAB. I don't know who's going to get the start. We got to monitor that. They could be an interesting team to watch. You got new Hampshire lost a ton uh, Albany. They lost what they, I think they lost under Cuffler to Akron. If memory serves me correct. And then Hampton who re, who's joining um, they got uh, Jet Duffy, the former uh, Texas Tech quarterback. It is going to be very fun to watch that race. I, I really think this this is a deeper conference and a more open conference than it's been lately. So each week is going to be must watch the CAA people. 
recognize. All right. The only problem is, is you got to get that flow sports thing. They got to get rid of that shit because that, that that's a hustle, but uh, you know, it's worth it for one more year. Get, get some CAA football. I don't know when their contracts up actually. So uh, we're going to talk some other conferences, talk a little C or talk a little FCS football with all these conferences. And then we're going to get to, Oh, well, I only have a short list of win totals, but we'll try to try to just pick out those. Um, but before that, I got to get us paid. I want to tell you that the college football experience FCS season previews brought to you by sleeper sleepers, the fastest growing fantasy platform today with millions of players. You probably already have a fantasy league on there. I know I do. They just passed over 4 million different users. First in any sport, you choose two or more players you like, and you pick the over or under. And if you pick correctly, you can win anywhere from two times to 20 times the amount of money you put in. And with the NFL season right around the corner, sleeper is the first sports contest game built into the fantasy experience. So right now on your mobile phone, join our listener group on sleeper.com at sleeper.com slash SGP and sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. Once again, that's sleeper.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by trade coffee. Trade coffee connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best craft roasters. And let me tell you, it's expert tasted trades. Got a coffee team that actually taste tests thousands of different coffees. They keep over 450 different coffees live and ready to ship out to you every single day. Come on. There's no one perfect coffee, but there is a perfect coffee for you and let trades human powered algorithm find it for you. So what are you doing folks right now? Trade is offering a uh, new subscribers, a total of $30 off your first order. Plus free shipping. When you go to drinktradecom slash SGP, that's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started today by taking their quiz at drinktradecom slash SGP and let trade find you a coffee that you'll love. Um, we got to touch base. Now we're going to shift into the good old Ivy league. Yes. Ivy league should be entertaining. You know, always, Got some decent quarterback play in there. What? Jay Fiedler, product of uh, the Ivy League. Ryan Fitzpatrick, product of the Ivy League. Go back to the days of what was it? Cornelius Benton. There we go. Go deep. I believe he was in the Ivy League. I could be wrong. Um, it, this will be a, this will be a very interesting season in the Ivy League. I love how they do the Friday nights. We want more weekday football, please. FCS, if you're listening, anyone, give us. Why can't we get a maxion version of one of these conferences? Please. You will make I think you can get a TV contract. I really believe that the thirst is out there. Give us it weekday. Every single th- if you if Big Sky said, "Hey, we're going to give you one game a week every Thursday." I'm telling you, that shit will work. That shit will work. Um, but the Ivy League does do a lot of weekday games, a lot of Friday games, stuff like that. And, you know, there's a lot of hype right now. I know uh the preseason polls came out. Harvard projected to, I think them in Dartmouth received 108 points uh, for or both, you know, getting a share. There were nine and one last year. Um, so that that's interesting that both of those schools will be back. This is going to be interesting. They have some good quarterback play in this conference folks. Um, you look at uh, what is it? I, I guess they have a little bit of a, a a controversy there. Is it going to be Charlie Dean at Harvard? Is it going to be Jake Smith at, at, at quarterback? Um, but I can tell you this, regardless, this conference, it's going to have it good quarterback play. And yes, you can make fun and say some of this other stuff of, okay, they don't have the best defenses. They're still entertaining football every single week. So uh, sign me up for Ivy league football and that conference race always I feel like always better than what you think coming into the season. You'll be like, I don't know about this, but watch out, watch out. All right. Uh, I, I just think there could be Yale. Yale's a solid team. Wouldn't surprise me if they're in the mix. Princeton, Princeton keeps a, a solid team. I think they're the preseason. Uh, they're projected. I think third in the Ivy league. Um, so I don't know. I just think it's a fun conference. Uh, obviously you got Columbia Penn after that. But uh, I think that race pretty thin, pretty thin up top. So that will be fun to watch. I know I don't have too much uh, information there on, on, on that, but uh, I, I know I watch every single chance I get with the Ivy league. Let's hop on over to the Missouri Valley, where I think most listeners probably want to hear about this conference because it is the best conference them and the big sky. I would say, especially now that the CAA loses uh, James Madison, but maybe SoCon SoCon's on the, on the come up. 
North Dakota State is the preseason number one, and guess what? They, they might have lost Quincy Patterson to Temple, but I'm not worried. Not worried. Cam Miller's back, and then uh, they have all these all those running backs back. Hunter Hunter Lepke. Uh, all the, they just have a slew of good running backs. Kobe Johnson. They got even the wide receiver spot. They get hit, lose lose a guy to the NFL draft, but I think Phoenix Sproles will step up and be fine. This defense only gave up 11 points per game last year. They're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. They're going to be in the mix for an FCS championship. More of the same here, but they need to make that jump because I mean, they they will, they will destroy some teams. Uh, but I'll say this. It's always fun to watch the race. Football is meant to be played on the field, not in, in rooms like this. So you got to go win the games and South Dakota state, very capable of beating them. And you can make a case. Some of these other teams uh, could knock them off as well. But uh, South Dakota state re- returns quarterback, Mike Gronowski. Remember he was out, got injured in that uh, FCS national championship game a couple years ago, the offensive line. They've actually had North Dakota state's number too. They just have had problems in the postseason. but people panicking saying, Oh, Pierre strong. He's on the new England Patriots. Maybe the ground game is not going to be the same. I think the ground game is going to be fine. Isaiah Davis is a very good wide out. They got the, the jank brothers. Uh, they got the tight end Tucker craft. This offense, I think will fly for the Jackrabbits. I know that they, they lose, you know, some coaches, but I think they're going to be fine. And uh, there's some value on, on taking the Jackrabbits. We'll get to that in a bit, but let's not sell short the rest of this conference. Bobby Petrino, AKA road rash face. Yes. Greatest story in college sports history. That mugshot, or not, not even mugshot. That press conference where he's wearing a fucking brace. His, his face looks like it's been, you know, on the back, tied to a back of a truck all through Arkansas. Absolutely fantastic. But he's a good coach. And Jason Shelley, you might remember him, the Utah quarterback. He transferred in. I think he stopped at Utah State before that, but he transferred in, and that offense was flying last year. I know the offensive line took. Was a bit of an issue, but I'm very excited to see Shelly another year of experience. I think the offensive line could be better this year. He's got that wide receiver, Tyrone Scott. Watch out. I think that would be a fun team to play. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about them uh, later. You also have the Saluki, Southern Illinois. Um, shout out to my guy, Stone Labanowitz, but uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. Avante Cox is still there. That guy's an absolute beast. I like the running back, uh, Javon Williams. Nick Baker did a solid job a season ago at the quarterback spot. It'll be interesting to watch just the Salukis. That race, this race in this conference is always fun. I don't care. You could say, well, North Dakota State's dominated FCS college football. You're right. But these games are still awesome. Absolutely awesome. Northern Iowa. They were just six and six a season ago. They always have a good defense, though. Always have a good defense, I feel like. I know they lost their quarterback, but I still always enjoy watching the Panthers play football. They're always a tough team to beat. They're very capable of beating you. Uh, they, didn't they just have a first round draft pick too? I feel like on the offensive line. Um, I think they'll, they'll be in the mix for some of these games, North Dakota. I think they, they, uh, they return a ton. They get uh, Tommy Schuster. They're fun to watch. I know they get Nebraska, I think in two weeks or next week, one of the two. And then you have South Dakota. I, I think South Dakota might be better than what people are thinking. That that could be a fun race. I know uh, Carson Camp, the quarterback. Did you remember that hail mary they had last year? The fucking game was insane. Um, they're in the mix, I think. And then after that, you know, you kind of have a bit of a drop off, but maybe not. I think Youngstown State could surprise. But Illinois State, Indiana State, Western Illinois, they probably all kind of unknowns. Probably a tear down, but uh, Youngstown State uh, could be on the way up a little bit. I think. I'm excited to watch that running back uh, McLaughlin for, for Youngstown. So I can't wait to see uh, the Missouri Valley. I'm going to hit you with some odds in a minute, but I want to just rattle through these conferences. Uh, we got, we got the, uh, the MEAC after that um, South South Carolina state won it a season ago. And I think they're probably going to win it again uh, if I had to bet, but I, it, it, this could be a closer race than I think. I think North Carolina central will be in the mix with Darius Richard at quarterback. Um, maybe make a case for the Spartans of uh, Norfolk state six and five a season ago. 
they uh, they they bring in some uh, some transfers. So I think it could be a, a fun race there. But I do think South Carolina State. I know they get UCF in the opener in Orlando. That one might hurt. But after that, uh, and then obviously North Carolina Central getting A and T week one. That awesome game. And uh, and then down the ranks, you know, actually we get Howard this weekend. Howard and uh, Howard and Alabama State. That should be a fun one. Uh, as you know, uh, quarterback Quentin Williams for the the Bison. That should be fun. Uh, I think that line is Alabama State minus six right now. I wrote Alabama State, but uh, I don't know. I think that could be a good game. You got Delaware State, also Morgan State in that conference. I don't know how good they'll be. Delaware State was just five and six last year, so maybe maybe they'll be. They lost a bunch of close games last year, so. But uh, Morgan State might have their work cut out for them. So uh, the Miac, give me South Carolina State to win that thing. Then we we jump over and we talk um, we talk Ohio Valley Conference, the OVC. Uh, this is one that should be a little fun too. I know UT Martin is the only preseason ranked team here, and with great reason. I think they're going to be probably the top team in the conference this year. But keep an eye out. I think I think uh, Southeast Missouri might be a little bit better this year. Might be a little bit better this year. No, they got to fix the the defensive side of the ball, but maybe they can battle for second place. You got the Racers of Murray State. We just had Bud Foster on the show. Shout out to his. He's an alum from Murray State. Um, go listen to that episode. But those teams, uh, and then Eddie George. How about what he's doing at Tennessee State? Right, he's brought in some talent. They get Eastern Washington week one on that red turf cross country trip. You know what? I'm actually going to call for Tennessee state to finish second. I think UT Martin one, Tennessee state two, Murray state three. And then I don't know after that, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think Eastern Illinois will probably be better. Now, they got to remember also Lindenwood is in this conference. Now they were nine and three in the D two last year. They bring back their quarterback. We'll see. We get to watch that. That is compelling. Seeing a team go from D two to D one each week uh, to see if they can play. Uh, but yeah, Tennessee State. Keep an eye out. They brought in the Austin P quarterback, Draylon Ellis. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Eddie George can do there. Um, and I love that Eastern Washington matchup. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a chance to watch that one week one. Uh, okay, we got a, just a few more conferences here, but. I got to get us paid one more time. I want to tell you that the college football experience is brought to you by Babbel. Join us for a learning, a learning, a learning session here of learning a second language. Because I remember for most of us in high school, you know, learning a second language wasn't exactly a high point of, of our academic careers. Uh, now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. There's a, uh, there's a fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you're traveling abroad or connecting in a deeper way with family, or maybe you just want to better yourself, Babbel is the perfect answer for you. It teaches bite sized language lessons um, that you actually use in the real world. They, and they do it smart, in my opinion. They do 15 minute lessons. And, and I think that's the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Uh, other language apps use artificial intelligence for their, for the, their lesson plans, but Babbel. Uh, Babel lessons were created by over a hundred language experts. Yes. And their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective with Babel. You can choose 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German, uh, and, and Babel's speech recognition technology helps you, uh, to improve your pronunciation and accent, which is always a key factor. I think, uh, right now save up to 60% of your subscription. When you go to babel.com slash SGP, that's babel.com slash SGP for up to 60% off your prescription. We're also brought to you by Elias. It's almost started the NFL season. I love this time of year. And if you're into sports betting or fantasy or whatever, well, you need a competitive edge to win. And that's why I highly recommend Elias game plan app. Um, it's the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL. Uh, and believe it or not, Elias game plan is the only sports app from the most trusted name in sports. Yes. The Elias sports bureau. And if you don't know who that, that, that is, that is the, they are the official statisticians for us pro sports leagues. Yes. Including the NFL and their app gives you access to everything team and player stats, head to head comparison, Eliza uh, or Elias insights uh, from the Elias sports Bureau research team. How, how great is that expert game analysis for betting? They'll help you build your fantasy team. 
you need to do it. You got to do it. I, uh, with football season right around the corner, I'm telling you, uh, don't wait. Find Elias game plan in the app store, or Google play store now. Uh, yeah. I mean, I highly recommend that we're, we're, I have to do my fantasy draft this, uh, this Sunday. So I know all about that. Uh, just scrambling to trying to find, trying to find uh you know, Oh, can I get, can I get this? Uh, who's what, what team's he on now? Because I'm so involved with college football. Now I love pro, but I sometimes miss a beat or something and find out, Oh shit. You know, I forgot this guy got signed by this team or what? Let, let Elias help you out there. So, um, all right. Well, where are we at here with the FCS? Uh, I know we were just talking Missouri Valley and I, I know that people will say, well, look, they, they always compare it to the FBS and say, well, you know, look at it. They have a, a large playoff in the FCS and North Dakota state wins it every year. True. But North Dakota state also spends way more than every other team. If that was the case that it, then in the FBS, Texas would be winning it every year. Not necessarily the case, not necessarily the case, right? Um, but let's move over and talk a little bit of pioneer football. Yes. The pioneer league. I think one of the more interesting storylines in the pioneer league. Well, unfortunately, San Diego seems to have fallen off a little bit, but uh, the Torero is always fun. Uh, they had a seven and four season a year ago. Um, they, they're going to be in the mix still. I think, I think they will be in the mix, but I do think some other teams have, have, have come up some The uh, Davidson wildcats are fun. They run an option attack, which I always enjoy watching. So I like seeing them. They're in Charlotte, Sandy, you know, they go, this team travels, this conference travels, uh, but keep an eye on St. Thomas N- new to the uh, new to the D one level, but they're uh, located in Minnesota. And I think they could be a team to watch. Um, they were seven and three a season ago. I think that's the, the mix is probably going to be with those three. I know the Dayton flyers and Rick Chamberlain might be in the mix as well. But after that, you got Moorhead state who plays what uh, Mercer this, this Saturday, we already have that out there. We handicapped that. I think they're, I want to say they're 24 point dogs at Mercer. Cause they lost a ton. Uh, they lost their quarterback. They lost their best wide out. They lost their best defensive player. So they're going to be re- replacing a ton despite them going seven and four. So they'll, they'll be a team that steps back. Maybe that means Marist can step up or, or perhaps Drake. I don't know. Butler Presbyterian with that crazy ass offense. I know they lost a bunch of players though in the portal. Um, I don't know. It's a fun conference, but I, I do think that it, there's a big gap after the, after the top uh, three or four teams. So I don't know. It's, it's fun though. It's fun. If you get a chance, check it out. Um, San Diego. That's where Jim Harbaugh started. So keep an eye out, keep an eye out on, on the Toreros. They're fun. The, the, the kid that was in the, uh, in the XFL was the quarterback, Josh Johnson. I believe he is a San Diego graduate. So uh, keep an eye out on, on what they're doing there. Uh, let's talk a little Patriot league. I always forget how many conferences we got here. Patriot league though is fun. I, I love this kid, Matt Saluka at Holy cross. That should be a fun team to watch this year as, uh, as, as they didn't, they went in to Yukon last year and absolutely whooped their ass. I thought just dominated them. I know also uh, this conference, it could get, it could get interesting because uh, they have one of the best quarterbacks at Fordham in Tim Dermott and Tim De, uh, Demorat, If I'm pronouncing that correctly, he's a beast. And like that dude's going to be in the NFL. So that will be fun to watch the Patriot league there. Um, I don't know. It'll be, I, I still think Holy cross is going to run away with it, but it will be funny to see. It will be fun. I'm sorry to see, to see Fordham in the mix there. Besides that um, I watch my Georgetown Hoyas every week. Shout out to Georgetown. I, and I know they retained their left tackle that left for UVA. He's coming back. Um, but I still think this, this, this conference has quite, quite the gap Lehigh. We're always fans of Lehigh. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be Holy Cross and Fordham. Maybe, maybe you can make a case for the Colgate Raiders. They open up at Stanford, going all the way to Palo Alto. Um, but other than that, uh, I do think uh, I don't know that that conference. It, I love watching. Uh, I love watching Sluka, that quarterback at at Holy Cross. Sign me up for that. Um, what else do we got folks? 
NEC. We get to see, we get to watch Duquesne this week. Duquesne is a fun watch. I know it's been between them and Sacred Heart over the past couple of years. They get to, they come down to Tallahassee. They're probably going to get destroyed. I know they got destroyed by TCU last year, but they also beat an FBS in the Ohio Bobcats. So keep an eye out. And they also have Stonehill joining this year. Keep an eye out. I think Duquesne and Sacred Heart, it's going to be between them again. Maybe you could talk me into Mary Mack getting in the mix with that Yukon transfer at QB. Uh, Jack Zara, Zara Gaitis, I think it is. Uh, maybe that maybe the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut State. I know they get Yukon next week. Um, <laughs> I expect them to lose the Yukon, but uh, then you got St. Francis and Long Island. I've been rooting for Long Island. I want New York City College football. Come on, Sharks. They got a brand new coach in Ron Cooper. We'll see how he does. And don't forget the Wagner Seahawks. And like I said, Stonehill in the mix. Um, that will be, that's a fun conference to me. That, I know they made guilty pleasure right there. Get watching some NEC football right there. Um, but, and let's, let's get on to the SoCon because the SoCon is awesome. SoCon is ESPN plus has a deal with the SoCon for college basketball and college football. I will put the SoCon up there for some of the most entertaining games you can turn tune into each and every week. Um, and this race is going to be awesome. The it's, it, it's the same in basketball, subscribe to the college basketball experience, but the, the gap between like one, two and three, all the way down is, is very thin. Like the, di- like Western Carolina and Samford, it's not that big of a gap from East Tennessee state and Mercer. And I cannot wait to see what's going to happen this year. Um, we get to see Mercer this Saturday, excited to see them. Uh, they got the kid from some coastal Carolina, Fred Payton at quarterback. Um, could they be a contender in, in, in the SoCon? I think they could. I think all these teams really, I mean, the, the uh, I, Chattanooga and East Tennessee state, the Tennessee schools are going to be there in the mix. Mercer, I think is going to be in the mix and I wouldn't even put it past Furman to what to, to win this conference. So keep an eye on those four. Um, but I, but you can make a case. Seth Morgan still at VMI. They run that air raid. It's fantastic to watch. I know they lose their wide out to Richmond, but they have some, some good guys. They have some really good guys on that roster. And I feel like, uh, I feel like Western Carolina showed some signs of life last year. Maybe they can come out the catamounts, uh, the Citadel, you know, I love the Citadel. All right. I remember when they knocked off South Carolina back with Mike Houston, Citadel runs a triple option offense. I love to watch that. I'm hoping, like I said, Citadel Campbell Thursday night next week. Can't wait for that one. And then Wofford Wofford was terrible last year, but I feel like not that long ago, Wofford wasn't that bad. Maybe they can come up, get, get things going. And then, and then obviously Samford, I don't know. I, I feel like there is a little bit of a gap these days in the SoCon. Maybe I'm talking myself into, as I'm looking through my notes, I feel like I feel like the bottom of Wofford and Samford and maybe Western Carolina, I think the Citadel can come up, but those three, um, maybe a little bit of a gap there, but I'm excited to watch the SoCon race there. Um, and, uh, obviously the last conference I think we, we have here is the SWAC. Um, the SWAC is Deion Sanders right now, Jackson state that I feel like they are the team to watch in all of, including FBS. I think they should like ESPN should be trying to put them on TV. They get the number one recruit in the nation. Are you kidding me? Uh, Sign me up for this each and every week uh, watching Jackson state. I'm going to have to find a TV, but it's going to raise the floor of the whole conference. You're already seeing it. I think Florida a and is really good. We get to watch them against uh, North Carolina this weekend with Jeremy Musa, the Vanderbilt transfer. They got some talented wide receivers. They got, they got a good corner. So I, I'm going to, the Rattlers into the mix. I know Alabama a and M loses a keel glass. Um, after that, you know, all court state, they were, they were pretty good a season ago. Um, I'm excited to see what Bubba McDowell can do at Prairie view. I, I, w- I got to interview him this off season. That was fantastic. Um, grambling. How about, how about year one with Hugh Jackson? That should be interesting. Brought in some, some nice transfers. How about uh, how about Eddie Robinson Jr. at Alabama State brought in some big time transfers as well. The, so the floor is getting is, is rising some. It's going to be very interesting. I think your favorites are still obviously going to be Jackson State. I think Jackson State is going to probably 
you know, run through the conference. But I think after that, I mean, the West division, man, you can make a case. Grambling could win it. You can make a case Prairie view with Bubba McDowell. He's earned that spot. You can make a case Alcorn state. They kind of, you know, have been one of the better ones lately. Um, Southern. I think that I think the door is wide open uh, as far as that division. So besides that though, I can't wait for uh, Jackson state, Florida A&M or what they play next Sunday, not this upcoming Sunday, but the very next Sunday after that week one, uh, I can't wait for that game. It's going to be a big time game. I believe it's in Miami. So, but Jackson state's the team to watch. Let's be honest. Um, and I think that will do it for all of our conferences there. Right. And I cover, Oh no, I got, I got the Southland. I still got the Southland left. Um, that, that that's an interesting one. Cause they got raided. Now you see teams coming back, uh, trying to, trying to find a home. Cause the whack didn't work out the way they wanted it to work out. And it's just, it's, it's chaotic in the Southland. Um, but Southeastern Louisiana, the lions, they're preseason, like top 25 ish. Um, and they're, they, they obviously lose. Cole Kelly, who was a beast quarterback. If you didn't get a chance to watch him, but they got Cephas Johnson coming in. Cephas Johnson got some burn. I believe with South Alabama in the Sun Belt, and then Incarnate Word. Obviously, they lose. They lose uh, Cam Ward to Washington State, and Eric Morris, the head coach, is the OC of Washington State. But they went out and got Lindsey Scott from Nichols. And if you had a chance to watch Nichols, yes, they played no defense, but Lindsey Scott was a baller. A little undersized, but he, he can ball. It's fun to watch. And, and Nichols is that's why that transfer hurts though, because Nichols is is in contention with them in that conference. Uh then you have McNeese, which will be an interesting, uh interesting situation. I know they've had coaching issues there. Uh and and Northwestern State in the mix. Uh and then we welcome in Texas A and M Commerce. How about that? D two school, seven and four last year. Uh, there's three new schools in the FCS and that is one of them. And then you got Houston Baptist. They were awful last year after they lose Bailey Zappi, they got raided. Their receivers left for Western Kentucky. Everyone left. They were winless last year. Can they figure out a way to get it going this year? And then you got Lamar just two and nine a season ago. So uh, that conference race is going to be very interesting. Um, I, I personally think it's a, it's probably a two team race with incarnate word in, in Southeast Louisiana. Still fun to watch. Maybe you could talk me into McNee's getting in the mix or uh or maybe Nichols. Um, so sign me up for that race though. And uh yeah, that now I believe I have covered all the all the conferences. So that gets me to uh the win bet. Odds to win the, the FCS National Championship. North Dakota State's at plus two hundred, South Dakota State at plus four hundred, Montana at plus eight hundred, Montana State at plus one thousand, Jackson State at plus Fifteen hundred, uh, Missouri State plus fifteen hundred, Northern Iowa fifteen hundred, uh, Eastern Washington plus twenty five hundred, Central Arkansas plus four thousand, Chattanooga plus four thousand. So, I think <clears throat> personally, I hate to go chalk, but I think you probably want to go chalk. If you're not going to go North Dakota State, you got to go South Dakota State, right? Those two seem to be on another level than everybody else, but. I'm going to make a case. If you go outside of that, it'll be Jackson state. Jackson state's going to be so much fun to watch. Give me some action on that. And maybe you could talk me into like Missouri state or something. Jason Shelley might be able to keep them in some games. Um, I don't know, but let's uh, let's also, I got some win totals here too. So win total wise, they didn't give us a lot. They gave us like 10 teams, North Dakota state's win totals, nine and a half. North Dakota State, uh, this season they play at Arizona. I think it's week two, is it? No, week three, I think. Um, North Dakota State's going to probably win that game. I know I like Arizona's quarterback situation, but the line of scrimmage for North Dakota State, they are very, very legit. So I, I think they should be favored in the desert there. Um, I just don't see if they were to lose that game. Okay, they get South Dakota State, but that's in the Fargo Dome. Maybe they can get them. I'm on the over on uh I think you got to play the over on North Dakota State there. Uh at that number, I I know that you you're 
your juice isn't going to be setting the world on fire. But um, I just think it makes it makes more sense to uh, to take the over there than the under. I mean, they get what Drake no North Carolina A and T no. Maybe you can talk me into like Southern Illinois give them the, giving them a game, but I don't know, folks. I think you take the over there with uh, with with North Dakota State. Now South Dakota State eight and a half wins, and they open up at Iowa next week. That they're capable of pulling that upset off. I know Iowa's defense is incredible. Um, they have a harder path though to me because they also get the very next week after a body blow from Iowa potentially. You get UC Davis and Dane Hawkins. I know they're replacing some stuff, but I still think that's a tough game. Then you're you have a um, a road matchup at Missouri State. You get at North Dakota State. You get at North Dakota, and you get at Northern Iowa. As much as I like this team, I would take the under on South Dakota State. Um, then you have what else do we have here? Missouri State six and a half wins. Give me the over all day on Missouri State. Probably my favorite play out of the win totals we have, which you can get at Win Bet. Um, yes, they got uh, Thursday night's matchup at Central Arkansas. It's gonna be a great game. I expect them to win that though. Then they they get the very next Thursday, uh, UT Martin the Skyhawks rematch of that FCS playoff game. Okay, they could lose that. Even if they lose that, I think they're gonna get one of. Uh, okay, after that they're at Arkansas. Let's say they lose that, so potentially one and two start. Then they get South Dakota State. I understand those three games in a row are absolutely brutal. I think they'll get one of them. They'll get one of them. I think they'll be two and two after September. Then they're at North Dakota. That's tough. Uh, but they get Southern Illinois at home. They don't play North Dakota state uh, sign me. I know they play also at the, uh, at Northern Iowa, but they get a buy before it sign me up for the over on Missouri state this year at six and a half. Um, then uh, the other win totals, we got Montana eight and a half Montana state eight. So let's, let's dive into that for a second here. Um, Montana and Montana state. I would say let me just pull up Montana State's here. Um, I would say Montana State's football football team probably going to take a step back this year if I had to bet because I feel like everything went right for them last year. But I don't know when you consider you know what it, I I was impressed by that offense. I was impressed. I know they got hit. A couple players got drafted. They welcome McNeese week one, and they get Morehead State. They do play at Oregon State and at Eastern Washington back to back weeks. That is tricky. Um, besides that, they do get Montana at home in the brawl of the wild. Sounds crazy. They get Weber state at home too. I kind of think, I kind of think you take the over there too. Um, Montana though, they get, see, they have the benefit. They don't get what they don't have a, uh, an FBS this year. So I kind of like the play. I know they still got to go to Bozeman, but I kind of like the play of Montana over better. Yeah. They had, like to me, their tough game is, you know, obviously brawl of the wild and Bozeman, but also uh, the Weber state game in Ogden. Uh, other than that, I think they'll be able to take care of business and, and, and they can, they're going to have a really hot start to the season, I think. So um, I know I'm saying, it seems like I'm saying over on all these teams, but you know what? Let me reverse that. Then let me take, no, I still think, I still think we go over South Dakota States. The, the one under I feel comfortable with right now, Villanova's at eight. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the under on the wildcats at eight Jackson state is at eight and a half. Give me the over. And I feel pretty good about that. I think you lock it up with them. Uh, East Tennessee state eight Chattanooga, seven and a half. See, I think there's too much carnage in that conference. Give me the under on East Tennessee state. I'll take the over on Chattanooga. Then you got the UT Martin Skyhawks that win totals at seven in the OVC. I will take the over on, 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 uh, on UT Martin. Southeast Louisiana is at seven in the Southland. Once again, I will take the over <laughs> and Kennesaw state seven and a half in the Atlantic sun. And I wouldn't bet that one, but give me the, give me the over on the, on my triple option boys, the owls. All right, folks. Uh, well, look, before we get out of here, I want to tell you that the college football experience FCS previews brought to you by sling. It's college football season, which means you need the unbeatable coverage of sling TV starting at $35 a month. Sling has all the big games on the biggest channels like ESPN, ESPN two, ESPN three, sec network, ACC network, Fox, 
and the Big Ten Network, all for the best price. And you can stream on any any device, record up to fifty hours with included DVR space. You can pause your ch- or or change your service at any time. Check out Sling.com for special offer. Sling, the live TV you love for a price you'll love. Try us today. All right. Well, look. Before we get out of here, we do have the lines for week one. All right, or week zero, I should say. Uh, so let's let's have some fun here uh, as we get a slew of games this weekend with the the FBS and the FCS. A lot of a uh, few matchups, obviously. D- Decane, Florida State. Uh, that's a thirty-five and a half point spread. I went Florida State in that one because I just think Duquesne. Even though I kind of like what I saw late in the year from them. I think I just have to, t- to take, uh, I think Florida state after losing to an FCS last year, I think the seat is so hot for Norvell. I think they will take care of business um, there. So give me uh give me, give me Florida state. To, I'm going to lay the points there. Then you have uh Mercer and Moorhead state Mercer laying 24 Moorhead state replacing a ton. It seems foolish. I know Warren state got housed by James Madison in the opener last year, but then they actually played better as the season went along, but they lost a lot. I am going to lay the points with the Mercer bears. Uh, then you got Austin P heading into Western Kentucky. Our friend Randy cross is on the call. Check out our newest episode on sports gambling podcast with Randy cross. We talk some FCS football as well. So check out that episode, former super bowl champ, uh, Western Kentucky's laying 21 and a half. I'm going chalk. I'm laying the 21 and a half. I think that offense is too much. I think Austin P lost too much. Um, Idaho state is catching 23 in Vegas at the death star. <laughs> I'm not touching that with the 10 foot pull. Give me UNLV minus 23. Uh, I actually, I will touch the UNLV side of that. Um, then I think with the game, the game of the week here, Jackson state, Stephen F Austin. That is an awesome game. Jackson State five and six a season ago beat Florida State beat Stephen F Austin who was an FCS playoff team. Rich Rod's coming in. Rich Rodriguez, famous West Virginia and Michigan head coach. How fast can he implement that offense? Still got Zion Webb uh, taking on Stephen F Austin. We know who, you know Stephen F Austin FCS playoff team returns their top couple wideouts, their top running back, the Hawaii transfer. Uh, they they have. Uh, well, I'm drawing a blank on the quarterback's name. Trey is it Trey self. I think at the quarterback spot, um, he's a beast. So that, that, that game is, is must watch. I'm going to take the lumberjacks to get it done against Jacksonville state. I think rich Rod is a good hire. It's going to work out long-term, but right now give me Stephen F Austin. I'm laying the two and a half. I'm going all chalky. I got to, I got to get a dog play in here. Give me Florida a and M North Carolina, Florida a and M's catching 35 and a half points. I think the Rattlers are better than what people think. Give me Florida A and M to hang around a little bit, a little bit. North Carolina's got App State on deck. They're gonna go a little vanilla. Give me uh, the Rattlers to cover that. We also have the uh, the Howard Alabama State game, the Miac and the SWAC challenge uh, going on there. Alabama State's laying six. I know Howard had a tough year last year. It was year one of the Larry Scott era. But this is Eddie year one for Eddie Robinson Jr. with the Hornets. And I like what he did in the transfer portal. So I am going to lay the six. So I'm going with all favorites and one dog. Jeez, that's 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 crazy. All right. But look, those are all of our FCS games for uh if you want to listen to the FBS picks, go check out the sports game or go check out the college football experience week zero picks. Um, we'll be back talking FCS next week, uh FCS week one. That will be absolutely fantastic. Some of those matchups I I, t- I touched base with there, um, the Tennessee State game to me, uh, Tennessee State traveling to Eastern Washington, that game's awesome. You get the Sunday Jackson State Florida A and M, uh, that game's awesome. So sign me up for all of those actions. We're gonna preview a lot of those games uh, next week when we talk about this, but. And then, like I said, the, uh, the Thursday, give me the Campbell, uh, uh, the Citadel and the Campbell going on. You got uh, the Citadel and the Campbell, the Citadel and Campbell going on. And then you have, uh, like I said, Missouri state, Arkansas state or central Arkansas. I should say that game's awesome. Monmouth, New Hampshire should be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about a lot of those matchups. Uh, Lehigh and Villanova. That's a, that's an old rivalry. Gotta like that. 
that's a Friday nighter. And then uh, you get to see the FCS. How, how about that? Before we get out of here, let's talk about the, the chance of an upset there. Sam Houston state, a and M Delaware, Navy, South Dakota state, Iowa, Richmond, Virginia, Davidson. No, that's a, that's a, that's I thought it was, a, thought it was something else. Um, UC Davis, Cal, who's going to pull the upset. We'll talk about it next week. Folks subscribe to the college football experience. We're on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Give us a follow as well, but yes, yeah, subscribe, check out YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Also remember subscribe to the college basketball experience. Cause we handicap every single division one college football, college basketball game for the past five years. Check us out. Check out the sports gambling podcast as well as they break down all 32 NFL teams. They have that preview out there. Check out the NFL gambling podcast. Check out our whole platform. Get the SGPN app for free in the app store and Google play store. And remember folks, check out the discord channel. Come talk FCS football with us. Sports gambling podcast.com slash discord 365 days of the year. We talk FCS college football, any type of college football. Really? We were talking D two earlier today. Check it all out. All right, folks, this is the college football experience. FCS season preview episode. Unfortunately, I have uh, North Dakota state playing for the national championship, but guess what? Jack rabbits upset them. That's the preview. That's what you got to do. Take the odds on that plus 400. This is the college football experience FCS style. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. Well, I don't get <laughs> they're cold, but they're counting down seven, six, five.